Senator Hoagland. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and uh, greetings, Secretary Vilsack. Uh, appreciate the opportunity we've had to work together as governors and uh, during your first stint as Secretary of Agriculture, and I look forward to working with you uh, in the future uh, as uh, Secretary of Agriculture on behalf of our great farmers and ranchers, the best in the world. Uh, recently, USDA froze more than $2 billion of the CFAP funding. Um, are you committed to continuing to get that funding out and, and then following the directives in the legislation that Congress included? Uh, I am, Senator. Uh, I, I hope that you understand and appreciate the fact that any new administration uh, needs to have an opportunity to fully understand and appreciate exactly what has taken place with reference to that fund, what commitments have been made, what commitments have already been uh, embraced. Uh, we just simply need time to have a better understanding of where that is. Uh, it is not designed for anything other than to give me, a, a, if I'm confirmed, a better sense of that program. Uh, obviously, we're going to follow the directives of Congress. I mean, that's that, that's that, that, that's reasonable and, and appropriate, and that's the way it should it should operate. I would say that we are going to continue to look for ways in which uh, the, the tools that USDA has can be utilized in the best possible way uh, to provide the assistance that people need to help build the economy back better, to expand opportunities uh, when and if that presents itself. But uh, if there's directive from Congress, we'll obviously follow it. Two I particularly worked on are both the WIP Plus, making sure that we had follow-on funding to finish out the full intent of the WIP Plus funding, and then also QLA, quality loss adjustment, something that I included both language and funding for, and would ask that in particular, as you work on those, that, that uh, you would coordinate with our office. Happy to work with your office and also would encourage uh, you to, us to provide input that we, can, that we can make sure that the folks at the local level fully understand and appreciate exactly how this program is supposed, these programs are supposed to work. Uh, I've received some indication from folks that maybe there's a disconnect between uh, what's happening on the ground and, and what the intent was. We wanna make sure there is consistency there. Uh, and to the extent that you can provide help and assistance uh, to, to give us direction and instruction uh, so our local folks know exactly what they need to do, uh, that would be helpful, Senator. Thank you. I appreciate that. We will do that. And also on Precision Ag, the RISE program, something I mentioned when you and I talked earlier, uh, we'd, we've actually secured two rounds of funding for that. I think there's about $10 million. That's a new program. It's going to be great for Precision Ag. Same thing. And if we could have that same approach on RISE, I would... Greatly appreciate it. Uh, well, absolutely, and and I'm glad to see that you all have, have made the decision to focus and invest in this area, because as we deal with climate, as we deal with increased uh, productivity, as we uh, deal with farm income, and as we encourage soil health, precision agriculture becomes an important uh, consideration. But to the extent that we can invest in it, learn from it, appreciate it. So, yeah, and it rises rural innovation, stronger economy. Uh, I use the acronym, but it, yeah, I, I think this is exactly the kind of thing that can have a, a very big impact, and, and I know you, you share, that, share that enthusiasm, and I appreciate that very much. Um, on the carbon capture, we've talked about it a lot. I'd just like to emphasize, and of course, I'm uh, certainly willing to work with our chairman. She's, I know, a, a strong leader in that area, uh, as, and our ranking member. <laughs> he and I work close on everything, um, but I, it has to be farmer-friendly has to be farmer friendly. Could you respond to that? Well, I think there is a concern uh, that a, a carbon sequestration bank uh, would potentially benefit uh, investors or benefit third parties. It has to be structured and, and, and devised and designed in a way that the principal beneficiaries are farmers. Why? Because we want them to do this. We want to encourage it. We want to incent it. Why do we want that? Because it's a quick win in terms of, uh, in terms of climate change. Uh, and I think farm, the farm economy, or the farm community, rather, is really ready for this. There have been conversations uh, in every major commodity group about this. There is a commitment to proceed forward. Farmers know how to do this. We need to embrace them and encourage them and incent them. And so whatever system we devise, whatever incentive program, whatever program we put together, it's got to be, there has to be farmer input, and it has to, at the end of the day, benefit farmers. And if it does, I think there'll be wide adoption of it. Uh, as uh, formerly chair on Ag Approach, now ranking member, we work with the CCC, and the first priority of the CCC has always been funding the farm programs. Uh, I guess my question would be, do you feel that, uh, that the CCC is something that, that you would want to use for uh, some type of carbon program? And 
uh, are you uh, willing to commit that the CCC has to be there to fund the priorities in the farm program first and foremost? The first responsibility of the Commodity Credit Corporation is to make sure that the Farm Bill programs are adequately, fully, and Good. timely funded. Good. Uh, having said that, Senator, uh, to the extent that that vehicle is available without compromising the ability to, to fund the Farm Bill programs, it is a great tool for us to, be, to create the kind of, uh, of structure that will inform future Farm Bills about what will encourage uh, carbon sequestration, what will encourage precision agriculture, what will encourage soil health and regenerative agricultural practices. And to that extent, to the, to the extent that there are resources available, I would hope that you all would provide me the opportunity to utilize that in a way, again, that doesn't compromise the Farm Bill programs, but advances and creates additional markets. Um, uh, Secretary Perdue had great flexibility, uh, appropriately so, under the uh, current COVID situation. I would ask uh, for, for the opportunity to, sh to use that flexibility appropriately, effectively, and smartly uh, to create the opportunity for you as you put together the next Farm Bill to understand what works and what, what would be helpful in terms of programs. We did do, uh, we did use it to help with the, the trade and I am encouraged we are seeing more trade now and we've seen some help there in terms of prices. I hope that continues. We know our producers want markets and that's what we're all after. Two, two kind of final questions I'll be quick. One is we've got to do more for our livestock producers. Uh, we've got to get them uh, more transparency and pricing in the market. We've got incredible concentration on the processor side. We've got to find ways to address that. That's a huge priority. If you could respond to that. And then one other point, Forest Service, we do need your help with the Forest Service. And it is part of the, as you know very well, part of the Department of Ag. We have ranchers out there on the grasslands. We need your commitment to help uh, with those ranchers out on the grasslands. So if you could just uh, finish with responding to those two issues. In, in, in 30 on. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> and I apologize, <laughs> Madam Chairman, for going over. Yeah. We'll work collaboratively with, the, with, with farmers and ranchers in terms of the access to forest land. Uh, you know, in, in, in terms of, uh, gosh, I've now forgotten your question, Senator. Sorry. Well, first, live, help for livestock producers oh, and then look, 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 there's no question. We, we need to strengthen uh, the laws that are designed to create more openness and more transparency and more price discovery. No question about that, but that's not enough. I think we need alternative processing opportunities. Why? Not just from the competitive standpoint, but also from a resilience standpoint. We found that when one or two uh, processing facilities uh, shut down during COVID, that it, just, it, it created havoc in the market. We can't have that. We have to have a more resilient food system. And that, in my view, uh, requires us to look at ways in which we can incent and encourage more processing facilities. Thank you. And then help with the Forest Service for our ranchers. Uh, I, I, I thought I responded. To okay, that. Yes. if you did. Okay, thank you very much. And again, Madam Chairman, thank you. I apologize for going over my time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Senator.